it's Leanne here and today on my channel I'm going to be reviewing my good old Canon EOS R100. I'll have good pictures on the screen for you guys as well as videos of what I'm talking about. So for starters I do want to say this is well worth my money um, in my opinion. It depends on what you're looking for. I'm looking for a good well, well I should say I'm really looking for both a good photographer camera for like thumbnails and for you know good pictures and you know selfies and stuff like that and I was looking for the 400 or blah, blah. and I was looking for a camera that films in 4k and here's like the list of things that I loved about this camera first of all it doesn't stop at like I think the mark was like 15 minutes on my G7X it doesn't stop I think I filmed straight for like 20 to 3 to 30 minutes and didn't even know it was still on um which is nice because you guys know that I do a lot of um sped up or montage -y type videos and it's really nice that I don't have to keep like making sure if it's on because this camera doesn't really announce that it's turning off. That's the only thing that I found um, kind of annoying. But I do want to show you. It's going to take me a minute. Give me a second. Okay, well, I figured something else out too. So I'll show you guys. So... First of all, here's the lens. It is the one that I got is just the single and it goes from again, I'll have better pictures, but it goes from 18 to 45 and this is what it looks like at 45. This is what it looks like at 18 and this is what it looks like when it's at that little circle mark. So what I didn't realize, uh, is that this is the body of the camera and you are eventually gonna in order for this to work you need this camera so i'll show you guys or i mean you, you need this lens which i just touched the lens with my ooly finger but see you're not really getting anything because you don't have the thing in there so and this took me a little bit so there's a red dot and there's a red um, a red slash up on the top. You're going to want to match that together and then you're going to want to go right. You're going to want to go right. So righty tighty. So now that you've went right and it clicked, your little red dot should be right kind of like diagonal to the EOS symbol. But you still can't and I'll show you what it looks like now it's going to give you this which says set the lens to the shooting position it took me a good old i think 30 minutes to figure this out so that red little dot you need to turn and sometimes you are going to have to be aggressive with this and yeah so here's what it looks like filming and i'm going to go in increments of what it says so right now i'm at 24 i gotta go a little fast 28 35 and then the full 45 and then i'm gonna go back to 18 and then this is what it looks like zoom the one thing that i have to say is the zoom is so freaking nice at this so like if i want to catch like a bird you know, like, let's just say Gatlinburg, where I want to catch, like, a bird in the sky or something. I don't know. Um, it goes really fast, and it zooms really fast, so it's really nice that it could do that. Because the Canon G7X was so freaking slow, and it was annoying me. Um, the biggest difference between the Canon G7X and the EOS R100, to me, for, like, vloggers, I think vloggers are going to understand, is the storage 
that it takes to edit the videos. For my Canon G7X, it was like filming on my iPhone where like it takes up a lot of storage when you're editing it. Whereas this, because I personally for me and not a lot of YouTubers do this, I like putting it in 4K even when I'm exporting it out of Final Cut Pro. So um, this kind of just does the dirty work for me. It films in 4K. So when I want to export it out of Final Cut Pro and I still do it in 4K, um, which I can have a whole video on the topic of like, you know, exporting from this to, or exporting from this to Final Cut Pro and how I really, really, truly, deeply edit my videos, I could show you guys as well. Just leave the camera emoji in the comments. But um, this really, like I said, this really does my dirty work for me. So all I really have to do is just export it out in 4K. And usually I think tops, it's like one and a half. I've never seen anything over one and a half, except for when I use my phone for a section of the, like the ending or the beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, this is so nice. It is a bit heavy though. That's the only thing that's annoying me the most is it's so heavy. But other than that, I have no freaking complaints whatsoever. Um, it, it does have the, it's still like the G7X where it has like um, autofocus, it has P, TV, <laughs> AV, manual, the camera emoji, it has all of these things. So if you, I mean, I'm not that into the camera yet to figure out what those mean and like what they do. I think the biggest difference um, is just the layout of this itself. I did not understand when it says mirrorless when I bought it. Mirrorless means it does you can't see yourself. That's why it's like my arm is short. So like going like this, you're still only going to see my face in the camera. Um, I have been kind of struggling with vlogging with this camera. I find a lot of my vlogging is usually the sped up version of things. Um, I'm really trying to fix that this time around in this week's vlog. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing really... <clears throat> Did y'all hear that? There's nothing really, I mean, more to this camera. I love it all around. It's making my life so much easier. And whenever I do get my Canon G7X fixed, this will be for majority of the videos. But when I'm talking to you guys like this, like, so like theoretically like this, when I'm talking to, fucking hell, there's a bug. There's like a flaw in my room. When I'm talking to you guys like this, I'm probably going to use the Canon G7X where I can flip up and see myself because I stare at myself instead of the camera. I know that's bad, but I think that's the only thing that would be different. And what the G7X doesn't have is this, where if you look into it, I mean, the camera is off, but if you look into it, you can see what the lens is seeing, which is nice. I think all around, I give this thing like a 20 out of 10. It, is make, it has been making my editing a lot faster, honestly, and... I just love it all around. So I got this for a steal. I will have the exact link to where I got it. I did get, and I'll have what I got on the screen, like the bundle that I got. I got it as a bundle and I only got the single. I did want to get the double, which eventually I am going to get the double, but that'll just be in time. But this is worth your money and I think honestly spending the money on this first would be your better option. It's going to give you a lot more features that the Canon G7X just doesn't. Um, and I, when I mean by features, not like 
a lot more physical features. I'm talking about features when you're in, like when you're working with the camera itself, it's going to zoom faster. Like I said, um, it also does really good photography. I know that Alyssa Rose has been using her Canon G7X to take pictures recently because Zane's birthday was just recently passed, which his birthday and my birthday match. Um, and then they also had his bachelorette party or bachelor, his bachelor party, um, two, I think like a week or two prior. So honestly, I, I've never really taken pictures with my Canon G7X compared to this. So again, I can't participate in the comparison. But what I will say is this, honestly, to me, would probably be a lot better for pictures as well as video, as well as videography. So, yeah. Now we're going to do thumbnails just to save time. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, give it a big thumbs up. And if you got this far, put a red heart emoji for Canon G7X and a double yellow heart emoji for the EOS R100. And if you guys didn't tell a difference, just say you didn't see a difference. Bye, loves.